All right, hello everyone. Today we are going to be looking at and taking notes at physical features of the United States and Canada. At the end of this lesson, you guys will be able to show how the physical characteristics of the United States and Canada affect settlement patterns of human populations. This will fulfill the Minnesota State San Standard 8.3.3.6.1. All right, so let's take a look at why people live where they do. This has to do with four physical and environmental features, including waterways, landforms, climate, and resources. Let's start with waterways. So what is a waterway anyways? They are routes along rivers, lakes, and oceans that are used to get from one place to another. Advantages of living near a waterway include the ability to water crops and raise animals, which allowed for a food source, transportation, along with transportation, exploration, and upon the discovery of other civilizations due to exploration, trading can then take place with any excess water crops or animals that have been raised. Let's take a look at some games that you guys may be familiar with on creating civilizations, including Forge of Empires or My Mini City. Now looking at these different civilizations, what is something that you guys notice they all have in common? Hopefully you guys all notice that they are all located near a source of water. Let's take a look at waterways in the United States and Canada. To the east, we have the Atlantic Ocean. To the west, we have the Pacific Ocean. To the south, we have the Gulf of Mexico. Inland, in the United States and bordering Canada, we have the Great Lakes, including Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, and Lake Erie. Further to the north in Canada, we have the Hudson Bay. In addition to large bodies of water, we also have rivers, including the St. Lawrence River. If you guys recall in Minnesota studies, the fur trade unit, the voyagers would use this river as transportation to get to the inland areas in Minnesota. In addition to the St. Lawrence, we have the Mississippi River, which starts here in Minnesota and flows to the south before it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. Along its way, it borders or crosses through 10 different states. In addition to the Mississippi, their tributaries, including the Missouri River, allow access to 31 of the 48 contiguous states. All right, let's take a look at how waterways affect where people live. We're going to look at a population density map. Now, you guys should remember a population density map shows high concentrations of where people live or sparse populate concentrations of where people live. Let's look at the southeast, Miami, known as a large tourist, tourist attraction. Heading to the north, Boston and New York. Boston is known for its harbor, allowing trade. And then New York, known for its immigration from the 1800s and 1900s, including Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. Heading to the west, we have both Detroit and Chicago, large manufacturing cities known for manufacturing automobiles. Being located on the Great Lakes, it allows for easy trade and transportation. To the southwest, we have St. Louis, which is the confluence of the Missouri River and the Mississippi River. During the 1800s, it was a jumping off place for many pioneers heading west. Heading up the Mississippi, we have Minneapolis. Similar to St. Louis, it is inland and not located on a large body of water. However, Minneapolis is home to St. Anthony Falls where the flour industry and the sawmill industry drew in thousands of people. To the south we have Houston and along the west coast we have Los Angeles and San Francisco which is home of the Golden Gate Bridges which guards the largest naturally occurring harbor or bay. And then to the north we have Seattle. Alright, so let's quickly review. How do waterways affect where people live? They allow for agriculture and farming. They allow for manufacturing. And last but not least, transportation and trade of manufactured and produced goods. 
I'm sure you guys are all in a bit of a head squeeze, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's take a look at landforms. A landform is any natural feature on the surface of the earth, which could include the mountain ranges, desert-like climates, and mesa landforms, as well as large canyons, including the Grand Canyon of the United States. So how do landforms affect where people live? We're taking another look at our population density map. Notice, in the western region, there's a large area where very few people live. Does this have anything to do with the physical features or the landforms in the United States and Canada? Let's take a look at a physical map. You guys will notice along the west coast or the western part of the United States, a mountain range that extends from Canada south through the United States and into Mexico. Hopefully everyone knows this is the Rocky Mountains. The second mountain range in the United States lies along the eastern coast. Much smaller in size, this is the Appalachian Mountains. And in the center of the United States is a large flat area known as the Great Plains. So how does this affect where people live? The Rocky Mountain Range has an absence of people due to its rough terrain. And in the center, the Great Plains region, there are lots of farms that take place here, so there's a large absence, absence of large cities. Let's take a look at climate. Now remember, climate is the average weather conditions of a region over the course of a year. So how does climate affect where people live in the United States? Remember, very few people living along the western coast, or the western part of the United States, sorry, and a high concentration of people living in the southeastern region. Looking at a climate map of the United States, you guys can see that where the Rocky Mountains lie and where very few people live, there is also a continental climate that is very short and it has a very short, cool summer. In the southeastern region, where there is a high pop concentration of people, there is a moderate climate with a rainy summer as well as a tropical climate along the tip of Florida. Let's not, affect, let's not forget about Canada. Taking a look at the a Canadian population density map, you'll notice that in the southeastern region along the St. Lawrence Riverway and the Great Lakes, there's a high concentration of people. To the north, there seems to be a void. Very few people seem to live in northern Canada. Does this have to do with climate? Let's take a look at their climate map. Now, although the northern half of Canada seems to be cut off, you can kind of get the idea that the further north you go, the colder it seems to get, with northern Canada being much of zone 1 and zone 2 reaching negative 50 degrees below zero. Along where the people were living along the Great Lakes, the climate tends to be much warmer. Last, last effect of where people live are natural resources, which are materials or substance, substances such as minerals, forests, water, and fertile land that occur in nature and can be used for economic gain. We are going to be looking at four. First, let's look at the oil reserves in the United States and Canada. Looking at a map of the oil reserves, one thing that you guys might notice is the Bakken Shale Play located in North Dakota. The Bakken Shale Play, if you guys recall, it has a lot of economic growth in North Dakota and increased settlement due to the successful oil industry. Coal reserves in the United States and Canada. Looking at a map, you guys will see that there are several coal reserves here in the United States. Notice the one along the eastern side of the United States. Looking at a population density map, you guys will notice that there is a high concentration of people living in this area, located along in the Appalachian Mountain Range. Around in the 1950s and 1960s, much of this coal was extracted by hand, thus needing a large labor force. Last, let's look at forests in the United States and Canada. Looking here, you can see there are sev lots of forests in the Canadian region. Zooming in and taking a look at Minnesota here, you'll notice that the northern part of Minnesota has large forests. Again, thinking about Minnesota studies, lots of people moved to the Minnesota area in the 1800s 
to join the lumber industry. In addition to the natural resource of forests, our natural occurring waterways allowed for transportation of the logs and felled trees. So, why do people live where they do in Canada and the United States? Waterways, landforms, climate, and lastly, natural resources. Well, that's it, folks. Hopefully you guys have completed your notes. Feel free to go back to the beginning to review the unit once again.